Let's try this one more time. Hello and welcome to part four of our Proxmox VE series. In this episode, we're going to pick up from the last video. I have uploaded a few ISO images and we're going to create our first virtual machine. So to do this, we're going to right click on PVE demo. This is the name of your Proxmox VE node. You don't want to be on the data center level. You want to be on the node level for this. Create virtual machine. And we're going to call this PVE Ubuntu. We're going to do an Ubuntu server 2004. And we'll leave this all at the defaults under system. I'll give it 40 gigs of hard drive space. Two cores. Two gigs of RAM. And default on the network. And we're going to check the box start after created and click finish. And so we see number 100, which is the first VM pop up. And we'll go ahead and click on that. And it brings up the console. And we've got our Ubuntu installer. And we can get this kicked off here in a moment. And we might actually do two VMs while, while we're here tonight. Once we get this started installing, I might kick off an install of FreeBSD. So we'll get this one going and then jump to installing another VM. All right, English. Update to the new installer. English US keyboard. It's got an IP address. No proxy except the default mirror. And we're going to let it use the entire disk. And of course, this is where you would choose ZFS if you were going to do that, or ZFS as we Yanks in the US refer to it. Done, done, continue. Install OpenSSH server. And we're not going to do any of the additional packages. And we're going to let it run its course and get installed. So while we're waiting, we're going to start another install. Create virtual machine. And we're going to call this one PVE FreeBSD. Next, select the ISO image. Next, set the defaults here. Again, we'll do 40 gigs hard drive space, two cores, two gigs of RAM, defaults for network, and start after created.
and we should get that here coming up so we're at our free BSD installer And if you've never installed FreeBSD, it's a pretty similar type of installation to most Linux or even Windows. The, the big thing is it's just presented in a little bit different way. The questions might look a little bit different, but you're going to be asked the same sorts of questions that are part of any OS installation. So we're going to say install, continue with default key map, host name. We're going to accept the defaults here and we'll just do auto using UFS, entire disk, and we'll leave it at MBR for the purpose of this. And so it sets up a two gigabyte swap, which is equal to the amount of RAM that we assigned. Finish, commit, writing partition tables. The big difference that you're seeing here is that for FreeBSD, they still use a text-based installer. And if you've been around operating systems for any number of years, you may very well remember the days when DOS and early versions of Windows had a similar type of installer. And, you know, don't fix what ain't broke. So just wanted to give people an exposure to FreeBSD and I do not claim to be an expert. I'm still learning. Um, I've done a few installs of FreeBSD now, mostly in virtual machines, uh, not counting FreeNAS, of course. I've, I used FreeNAS from the zero point six days um, before they were part of IX systems. And so I've seen the installer free BSD before, um, but setting it up as a base server is something that I don't have a whole lot of experience with, but hey, We've got some extra time this year, thanks to COVID. So let's dive into a few new things and learn together. So while this is doing its thing, I'm going to check on our Ubuntu install. And that looks like it's still copying things. So one could argue that the Ubuntu installer for the Ubuntu server edition might be a little more polished looking than the FreeBSD installer. You know, it's one of those six of one, half dozen of the other. Everybody's got a personal preference. And, you know, it's not for me to say I, I'm just your uh, host here and trying to take a 10,000 foot view down at some of these things and do some comparisons where applicable. Oh, FreeBSD has jumped ahead. So, root password.
Select network interface. IP version 4, yes. Yes for DHCP. IPv6, no. Resolver configuration, that's fine. America. United States of America. Michigan, most areas. Yes, that looks good. Skip setting date. Skip setting time. And we're going to set the default there. And I think I'll just leave the default there for the time being. Add users to installed system now. Yes. Username. user apply configuration and exit installer See if this updates here momentarily. Or maybe not. We'll jump back over to Ubuntu and see how we're doing over there. That is ready to reboot. So we're going to say reboot. We're going to go to hardware. We're going to go to CD ROM edit do not use media okay return to console hit enter and it should go ahead and reboot into our fresh Ubuntu system if we jump back to FreeBSD for exiting would you like to blah 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 N uh, no say reboot and then we're going to do the same thing on the hardware tab edit no media okay and jump to console and that is booting from the hard disk and Ubuntu should be up already or it's still booting and so we've got not one, but two virtual machines added to our Proxmox virtualization environment. In the next video, we are going to look at downloading container templates. So stay tuned for that. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and click that bell for notifications. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Stay safe and happy computing.